Hello! Today we get to be on the Cat and Nat show. <laughs> this is my dear friend Natalie and she's joining me today and we have been nerding out. I want to say nerding out because that's really what it feels like. We've been nerding out on marketing for the last um, couple of months together and I've actually asked Natalie to help me teach a upcoming weekend workshop called Conscious Marketing. And she is a genius of words, but also she just condenses her knowledge around marketing in such an accessible way and teaches it in such a way that like really anybody can walk away with these skills and understand how to resonate with their audience and connect with their audience and actually create conversions and sales um, from their audience in an ethical and moral way. So I've asked her on the podcast, I've asked her to collaborate with me on this workshop, and now we are here to just nerd out about marketing <laughs> and just have a conversation um, and and share with you what why we feel so passionately about this. So welcome, Natalie. Hi, Kat. I'm really excited to have the Cat and Nat, Nat and Cat show. <laughs> so, um, for this is going to be released on both of our podcasts. So, I want to start out by just asking you to introduce yourself to my audience because um, they may not know who you are and why. I mean, I guess I can go into why I, I think you're wonderful and that you need to teach this stuff. But yeah, just give us an intro into you. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. So I am Natalie Ross, and I'm a co-founder of EarthSpeak, which is a community and media production company that is focused on helping um, people who practice earth-based spirituality to feel less alone in the world and to really develop their intuition, develop their spiritual practices, and belong with other people who get them. And I've been doing this for a number of years. I love it. I love my community and all this like this work is just so much more than a job you know it's like a calling and mm -hmm. through this work I've been I started my first podcast in 2016 and um, Earth Speak as it as it stands now was birthed in 2019 and through this work I have been required essentially to learn how to market things and sell things and i've invested in so many programs and and mentors and and, and they've been some of them have been wonderful and a lot of them have been uh icky and just didn't fit well with me and the people that i could find to help me far you know i there's i just want to say there's been some gems of people that have been just so illuminating on my path but the majority of what i've come across are people who are just teaching tactics that are um, harming rather than healing. And these people also don't understand this world that I'm in of energetics, of nature connected spirituality, of intuition, of spirit. And I think that, you know, <laughs> so in recent years, I've kind of had a like underground side business that I don't promote which is kind of funny because I'm all about marketing but I've just had this like underground side business uh where, where I actually coach spiritual entrepreneurs how to create content and market themselves and sell in a way that is in integrity and in a way that is fun and attracts the people that they really want to be working with and I think it's so important I'm really 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 into doing this work and I'm starting to do more of it because I love it first of all but also because I see I everywhere I look I see these beautiful people doing amazing things for the world who have such potential and capacity to make such big changes to guide other people through healing and making really powerful transformations in their lives and these people these practitioners, these people who are selling products, you know, or offering services, they just don't know how to talk about what they do and their content does not make sales. And I can just see exactly 
where there's a gap and how they need to connect the dots. And I want to help these people who help people to help more people. And so I do this work and I love it. It's super fun. So yeah, thanks for inviting me to all this cat. And, um, and I love working with you and yeah, I'm really stoked to do all of this and to help people help people. (laughs) I love it. Um, and I want to circle back around and really dive into like what that ick factor is, because I know exactly what you're talking about. I have taken many, many marketing courses myself. Again, similar experience of like some of this resonates, some of this doesn't. And, you know, I also have had to like create this like mosaic of marketing like toolbox based on, you know, my own intuition and then like bringing in the technical skills that I've learned from other people. So, um, I, I want to make that explicit. Like what is that ick factor that you're talking about that we all as spiritual entrepreneurs have felt? I love it. Well, let's get into that, but I would love to hear from you, Kat, you know, (laughs) to introduce you to my audience. Like what do you do? And, uh, what is, some of that beautiful service that you provide to the world. What lights mm-hmm. you up about this? Yeah. Thanks. I am so like used to being the interviewer. I, <laughs> it's so funny when it's like, we have to, you're going to hear us bouncing back and forth being in the interviewer and interviewee seat. So yeah, thanks for bringing that back, Nat. Um, so I, Spent the first part of my career as an acupuncturist and Taoist medicine practitioner. So really working on imbalances in people's bodies. And then when the pandemic hit, I had already built up this really, really beautiful community on Instagram and decided to go full on into coaching. And so started out my career as a conscious relationship coach. And you know, found that there was so much trauma locked up in people, both in their bodies and also how they relate to their romantic partners was my my focus. But as I started um, doing this work, I started getting a lot of pings from other entrepreneurs, other um, coaches, other um, acupuncturists who were asking me, you know, how do you market the way that you do? And how do you connect with your audience the way that you do? And so I sort of began similar to you, like down low, like not really advertising that I was taking on mentees, did that like on the side for a little bit until finally I was like, this is the thing. And I think that that's the thing that's common for both of us is, this idea of there's so much medicine locked up in our spiritual entrepreneur community and we are so afraid to step outside of our trauma stories and look at these things so that our medicine can actually be shared. And so for me, it's just as much the technical skills around how to run a business, how to market, how to create content, but the you know, one of the things that I like to say is that my business is my spiritual practice. And I really think of it as being the portal through which I've had to walk. And I've walked many, many people through this portal at this point, um, to help them uncover, you know, what's at these like core trauma knots. What are these stories around resources? What are these stories around money? What are these stories around being seen, being safe to put your magic out there? Um, And as we started unlocking and unraveling these things, then the technical skills become a more accessible thing that you can learn. Um, What I find in a lot of my client community is that they're sort of burnt out on the how-tos because they haven't had a chance to actually get deep and understand the why they feel blocked. And it's like, once we understand the why, then we can layer on the hows and add those skills in a way that you're actually able to digest and absorb them. So that's really um, what I loved about this pairing in particular is because, you know, I can bring in some of that like 
we'll talk about yin yang theory a little bit in in the podcast episode but i bring in a little bit of that like yin energy so that people can feel safe to show up and market and then you bring in the beautiful yang structure and the technical skills that you can then put into aligned action based on your intentions that you cultivated in the yin and so um i think that there needs to be a balance of both and and I'm just seeing in the marketing space, there's so much young energy and I want us to go back and just like go back to the basics and go back to those foundations and understand the, the value and the beauty and the essence of the yin before you hop into action mode. Yes. Love that. And thanks for that introduction. And as you're talking, I think it's so funny that you and I just without planning showed up like I have white hair and I'm in a, a white <laughs> shirt and you have black hair and you're in a black shirt and like in our re respective um, approaches, like you are so knowledgeable and experienced with guiding people through that energetic aspect and with that integration of what is at the root of that block or that fear or that resistance you know, this is trauma healing. And yet you, so that's like, you're like one part of the yin yang symbol. And, <laughs> and then, you know, with, and like, just cause you're wearing black today, I have no idea what white or black represents in yin and yang. It does actually. Is yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But then you have that little dot of white because you know how to apply all this stuff. Like you, you know, but you're like zone of genius that, and what you love doing is in that energetics. And then for me, I am, um, I am a scientist by training. I have a master's degree in soil science. I freaking love protocols and like how to and all, like, I love this stuff. And I love understanding the background of the why and all that. And then I'm, you know, so I am like the, I am the white side of the yin yang, but then I have a little black circle of um, all my experience coming from having done so much trauma healing myself and now becoming certified as a somatic experiencing practitioner because this is so important like this part of it is so important and we just don't get to the place we want to get to without it yeah. and so yeah I, I love I just love how we just naturally showed up this <laughs> way and we're this. yeah 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 that's hilarious yeah all right so yeah. you want to get to some of the ick factor yes okay yes. let's do the ick factor ooh, ooh, ooh. so I guess like I kind of want to talk about this in a way of how uh, how I see it happening in, in people's businesses and their kind of like resistance and fears around marketing. So mm -hmm. um, I think that there's this kind of ick factor of like people are scared because there's like, and there's so much behind it. Oh my God. I'm so glad we took this workshop. <laughs> okay. Um, People By the way, are... the workshop is just going to be like so much information between me and Natalie. We don't know how to stop talking. So, <laughs> uh, um, so I think like people are, first of all, they're really resistant to talking about uh, pain. And I think that they don't really want to talk about pain or pound on pain or the people, the problems that people are having because that can be really re-traumatizing. It can be really yeah. manipulative. And in traditional marketing, it is. So yeah. that's the first thing that comes up. I, I'll pause there and see what, what do you want to throw in the basket? Yeah, I'm totally on board with you in that like people have a lot of resistance to talking about pain, but I think that there's an important intention to lay down when it comes to talking about pain. Um, like if your intention is to manipulate and coerce and really put that person into just being in such a traumatized state and then you come in as this like rescuer and this like knight in shining armor sort of energy, then yeah, there's not really a lot of sovereignty in that client making that decision. And I think that's one of the things that Natalie and I feel so strongly about is this idea of recognizing your potential client as a sovereign being and honoring that and letting them feel empowered in their choices. And so when we talk about pain in our marketing, it's coming from a place of like, like more of that yin energy of, I understand you. 
And from that understanding, and it's never like we're pounding on pain that isn't there. Like the pain is there. Um, and you know, we would be doing our clients a disservice as coaches, as mentors, as consultants, if you are just skirting around pain instead of like actually stepping into the depths of that pain with that client. And so I really think of it as the energy of like, I am with you in this pain versus I'm from up high and like, like I see that you're in pain, tiny minion, and let me come fix that for you. <laughs> yeah, the savior. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's that, that's that ick factor of like traditional marketing tactics that we're just kind of brought up in, in our society. I mean, they're like everywhere. It's like, you're told you're not enough and mm -hmm. you're told like, you need to buy this product in order to fix yourself or be enough or whatever. And like, you know, that you'll never be enough because we live in a society of supremacy where the only enough is to be a cisgender, uh, straight white male, <laughs> you know? <laughs> of like for all the people who aren't that we're never gonna be enough in this society and that's how traditional mark that's like what traditional marketing is rooted in yeah, and i mean like so much of like the way that women in particular are marketed um towards you know all of our beauty products and our anti-aging if you are from an asian country like the anti you know darkening products um like there's so much around you are not good enough and here is the fix that's going to make you good enough. Um, and, and oftentimes those standards are not set internally, they're set um, externally and, and these markers of success and these markers of beauty or these markers of, of good enough are, are not actually coming from within. Right, it's that external authority, external power, mm -hmm. giving away your sovereignty, giving away your agency. Yeah. and allowing your your value and your worth to be decided by something or someone else i mean it's just like it's, it's like uh it's just like i'm like feeling icky just talking about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's not how we want you to market we know that's not how you want to market so we want to talk about you know how how can you do that differently and yeah. so um you know I don't know if you want to give folks a bit of like a little sneak peek into what we're going to talk about in the in the workshop but um for me i think i i come at it from this place of um how can you balance your own energy within yourself as a practitioner as a spiritual entrepreneur so that you aren't bringing in what i call unbalanced yin energy or unbalanced yang energy into the marketing space. And so a lot of that work of, of showing up externally has to come from that internal process first. Um, and so that's sort of this, the, the landscape of, of, of how I think marketing, marketing always has to come from within for it to be an authentic sort of message. Right. Right. And, and in this, I'm inherently hearing you say, like, um, one has to come from a place of their own agency and sovereignty and not from yes. that place of I also need fixing and maybe you as the client can fix me. I don't like there's so many weird, subtle utter undertones that can happen yeah. in imbalanced uh, coming from that imbalanced place. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That was a really, really good thing to name of like. Yeah, because if you show up to marketing and you feel like you need that external validation, then the sale is not just about you making a sovereign offering and the client making a sovereign yes. It's about, oh, now all of my value is wrapped up in their yes. All of my, you know, scarcity wounds are wrapped up in that yes. Um, how I find value and um, worth in myself is wrapped up in that. Yes. And that's a lot for a client to carry and it's inappropriate for that client to carry. So, um, it's about doing that internal work and, and we go through a lot of different practices that we can, um, use to balance that even before you show up in the marketing space. Oh yeah. yeah. Yay, I love yeah. how you teach that stuff. And like, I want to kind of touch on another ick factor of, yeah pressuring and that's part of this manipulation is like applying this pressure and you know 
okay, just kind of like coming from pain, you know, naming pain is part of the marketing process. You don't have to do, you know, and, and, and pressure is part of just kind of like humans kind of need certain pressures to make decisions. But the pressure of the challenge that someone is experiencing is itself enough pressure for them to make a decision of whether or not to work with you if they have all of the right information. We don't need to pressure them by acutely activating their pain and making them believe that the only way to solve their problems is to buy what you're selling and then making them fear that if they don't buy, they'll be stuck in their pain forever. Like that is so old paradigm. That is so not how, you know, like this doesn't even work for spiritual entrepreneurs because they already are so, um, they already have at least one foot in that world of energetics. They aren't, you know, blind to that anymore. And once you awaken to this, you have to honor energetics and you yeah. can't continue. Like if you try to do these old tactics, you might get some uh, responses, but you're going to get clients that you hate working with and you're going to hate the process of marketing and you're just going to kind of feel like crap throughout of it. Yeah. It's like, it's not going to be fun. Yeah. Ouch. I mean, like that hurts. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it's so like to me like what you're naming is that there's been a gap in the resources that have been available to people who want to market in an ethical and moral and spiritually aligned way is like you know if you're more um i don't know if i want to what the terminology would be exactly, but it's like, you haven't done any consciousness work. Um, you're sort of still stuck in that world of results oriented outcome based, um, pushing uh, forcing. Yeah. If you're in that space, then the traditional marketing models actually do work well for you. Like as gross as that kind of sounds, but there are a lot of us who are waking up to just seeing these underlying patterns in the matrix and being like, that's kind of fucked up. Like, but not really having a roadmap on how to do it differently. And so then as a way of exercising your own sovereignty, being like, I'm just going to opt out. I'm just not going to market. I'm just not going to show up. Even though I have all this beautiful medicine within me, the right people are just going to find me at the right time. And that's not really how this works. You have a responsibility and accountability to your potential clients to show up and actually share exactly who you are, why you do the thing that you do, why you um, have put forth this particular offering, how it's of service to them exactly, because then that client gets to make a full and sovereign yes based on like pure information. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that you brought up that ick factor as well, because one of the things that, as you were talking about it, what that brought up in my nervous system was, I never want to make decisions based on reaction. Like, I want to be responsive in all the decisions that I make, and if I'm asking my client to step into their sympathetic nervous system and make a decision from a scarcity place and from a fight or flight place, then that's not really strong, secure footing to begin that relationship with your client. Um, and so I'm kind of against the, like one of my marketing or one of my sales coaches, um, told me like at all costs, try to get a yes at the end of the sales call. And to me, like that sat so like uncomfortably in my nervous system because I know that I personally need time and space to process things, especially if I'm going to be making a purchase of over a thousand dollars. Um, I want that time and space to process that and to try to convince or manipulate or coerce somebody into making that decision on the fly, on the very first time that you're meeting them, like, Ooh, you're making the ick face. That's the ick factor. <laughs> You named it so well there. Mm. Yeah, like that is so ick. That is so ick. Yeah. Um, I have another ick factor I want to touch on too. And I think this is something that a lot of people are probably feeling is, you know, because of Instagram especially, is that in order, uh, there's this 
this isn't necessarily traditional marketing, but I think this is kind of an ick factor of modern marketing and social media marketing is that uh, you feel like you have to be cool or pure or perfect or whatever in order for your marketing to work because Instagram is such a visual um, platform and it is, you know, rooted in this society that really does uh, give greater privilege and rewards to people who look a certain way or who show up a certain way. And I think there's, you know, and no matter, this isn't just, uh, there isn't just one way that people are rewarded. You can be in the spiritual community and there's still a way that like, maybe you feel this pressure that you have to be pure or yeah. perfect and that you can't reveal that you actually are a human that does certain things that other people are going to judge as bad or you have to like be really cool and like if you aren't cool then your marketing stuff going to happen like I, I see this happening for so many people and it's yeah. it sucks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's like how many times can we we replay that like click story in our lives <laughs> in all these different iterations and you know like what you're speaking to is like this like the perfectionist archetype is something that I see so often in our communities um and I'm not quite sure where that comes from I don't know if you you have a sense of where that comes from but like for me in my own personal life it was like, if I wasn't perfect, it, I mean, I, it definitely comes from my family. <laughs> like, um, And, like, our school where we're pressured to get the right answers, even though that doesn't really mm, fucking matter in the real world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and to me, that brings up this, like, idea of, like, quantifiable things matter more than the qualitative things, you know? And these vanity metrics that people are chasing and um, these ways in which we find validation um, based on numbers and figures and how things look versus like is there an actual connection here you know and I'm like not to like actually I'm gonna toot my own horn <laughs> like um, I think because I entered the Instagram space not from a place of like I want this to be my business, but I was looking for community, um, especially after I had gotten divorced from my husband of 12 years. I just started sharing things that I was experiencing and learning and um, everything from my history with addiction to what I was, what was coming up in terms of my attachment patterns and what books I was reading and these little insights that were coming up. And because I was focused on that from the beginning, I really didn't care how many people I had in my Instagram following. And um, I had a six-figure business before I hit like 1,500 followers on Instagram, which anybody will tell you, like, that's not really a thing that people <laughs> are doing these days because they're, I mean, even when you're like, right now I'm, I'm trying to write a, a book proposal for my um, upcoming book and even publishers are asking me like how many people do you have on your newsletter list how many people are on your Instagram following and it's just like why does that even fucking matter like like my community is is so much deeper than just a number and I'd really like us to like pull away from that idea of perfectionism and vanity and um, and move more into the realm of like, how do we find true connection? Yes, I have so, oh my God, I have so, I'm like, wow, maybe we need a separate workshop about Instagram because I have so much to say about Instagram at some point, but <laughs> oh, I do want to mention too, like there's two things I just want to name because mm -hmm. at this point, because of the system and the way, like I was not a cool kid in school. I'm a total dork and um really struggled socially and i've had a lot of therapy sessions around the kind of like how weird it feels now to kind of be a cool person just because of this business and community i've grown and so mm -hmm. uh a lot of things there and i just want to name if i've had people come up to me or message me after an event and they'd be like i saw you at the event but i didn't want to disturb you so i'm just gonna say if you ever see me 
and I am not like deeply engaged in something and it wouldn't be interruptive, come freaking say hi. I am a real person who like <laughs> is disgusting and like has problems and is has compassion and likes connecting. So please say hi. Some of my favorite moments have been when I've gotten to meet people because they recognized my voice or my face and then we got to hug and then we became friends or got to like just I don't know, it was just like a beautiful moment. So Yeah. I just want to name that and yeah some of my instagram posts like i can get a thousand likes on an instagram post and get no purchases i can get 27 likes on a post and get three purchases and make 150 bucks yeah like this it's the, it, there's so much i want to just dispel about instagram. yeah this just... isn't a conversation or a workshop about instagram <laughs> yeah but, but i think it, we'll... it's relative yeah it's just to name that like you don't have to be a part of the cool kids club yeah um like that's also, you new... are cool yeah. No matter what uh, any freaking cool kids club says, you probably are way cooler than you think you are. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Okay. Um, so there's <laughs> one more one more ick factor that has been bouncing around my head okay. that um, I kind of want to get your take on is um, I keep hearing this from or rather reading this on social media of like feel the fear and do it anyway. And I'm because I am now like sort of following a lot more business coaches because I want to see what's out there and I want to see, you know, how other people are teaching their things and, you know, some of it aligns and some of it doesn't, but like I've literally seen this particular line come up like three times in the last week and ugh, it kind of makes me feel icky about it. And they were speaking specifically about marketing, uh, feel the fear and do it anyway. So I want to get your take on, on as somebody who is an amazing marketer, how do you feel about that? Well, I feel like there's truths and then there's like, it's not a full truth. And I, my take is, and you know, um, the fear, as you kind of mentioned earlier, is something that's like fight or flight's coming up. It's like your, your your nervous system is detecting a threat. It's like, this is not safe. Do not pass go. You're going to be harmed or die. Ah, do it anyways. So I think like in terms of how do you feel the fear and, you know, finding safety is really important. And sometimes, um, sometimes doing a thing that you're scared of and then seeing the result that you are actually okay afterwards can help you shift that fear into more trust and safety. Mm. But sometimes it can just further activate you. And so I think that it's so much more nuanced than feel the fear and do it anyways. Yeah, yeah. And that's the word that I, I think I was searching for in my own brain of like nuance is, hmm like if i want to be instilling a sense of safety and security in my potential clients i also have to be coming at it from a sense of safety and security within my own nervous system um and yes. and that doesn't mean that you know it's a binary situation. It's not like, you know, you aren't ever going to feel fear in the marketing. And if you do feel fear, like you, you can't be moving forward. Um, I've been playing with this state of nervous sighted energy and trying to expand that state within my own nervous system, which is, um, straddling that space of excited, which is coming from your parasympathetic and the for, for someone who doesn't which, know what parasympathetic okay. is because like i remember when i was learning this stuff i was like what what that doesn't make any sense like sympathetic blah, blah. so like what yeah. is par parasympathetic um so parasympathetic is when you're coming at things from a relaxed and safe and secure and um just like comfortable place um and sympathetic is when your nervous system is activated into that threat detection mode and I either need to fight, flee, freeze, or fawn to get myself through this situation. And I think growth happens in that space in between 
that parasympathetic and sympathetic state. Because if you're just excited about something, to me, what that demonstrates is you still feel safe in it, right? Like you feel comfortable with whatever action this is. It brings on a sense of like excitement, but you kind of know what the outcome is going to be, you know, so it's not taking on a huge amount of risk to move forward. Um, and if you're just nervous, to me, that's like your, your nervous system is activated into that threat detection mode. And so if you can find that lovely space in between where you're nervous sighted, I think that that's where growth happens. Because oftentimes when you're in that nervous sighted state, you don't actually know what's going to happen. You're kind of excited about this prospect, but you know, it's also bringing up some fears and you know that this is moving in a good direction, but, um, what if so-and-so says something about it? You know, like it's, it's, it's kind of a scary place to live, but I think that that is the space, um, to try to occupy when you're, when you're thinking about a lot of these decisions that you're going to make about your business, whether that's marketing or putting out an offering or doing a launch or showing up and being the best damn practitioner that you can be. Yeah, I love that. And as you're saying that, like, there's something about nervous sighted is like, if you are scared and just nervous and fearful and, and you do it anyways, and you don't have enough sense of safety on board in that, you're just going to activate yourself into a space of like dysregulation. That's where you're just like, you, you can't think straight. You can't make, you know, logical decisions. You're just like reacting and you feel like, you know, ag agitation, anxiety, shut down, fatigue, like, mm -hmm. the, like you're overly activated. You're like, you can't yeah. come back. And that's, you know, essentially trauma. Like you can't come back to safety. And mm -hmm. so that's that part of that nuance too is like, and what you're talking about with the ner just being in the nervous and not being nervous sighted is like, if you have enough safety on board, then that safety, can, you can come back to that safety yeah. and come back to that safety. And the point at which you can't come back to that safety, that's the point, that's the, that's the edge of the growth for now. And don't, do not pass go. And like, yeah. I think that learning how to discern that in oneself is so huge, like in your whole yeah. entire life, like this will change your whole life. Like come to our marketing <laughs> workshop and learn how to market stuff, but change your whole life because yeah. this is like, <laughs> this changed my life. I mean, I could just go on for hours about that, but yeah. 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 Because we never want you to be going through any sort of process overriding um, what your nervous system has put in place to protect you. And so, you know, if we were to override that sense of like, oh, this is bringing up some fear, then your, your body, your mind is going to go to the natural places that it, like these strategies that have worked before. And so this is where I hear from people, like, I know what I need to do, but for some reason I just can't move forward with my business. Or, you know, I on the opposite end of the pendulum are folks who are like, I'm doing so much. I don't know why I can't seem to like find a direction or like, a, like where I want my business to be going. Like I'm doing, doing, doing right. And so to me, like, that's like, oh, you've built your business based on this idea of an activated nervous system. And it's like through no fault of your own, you know, we are asked to override our nervous systems all the fricking time in society. <laughs> and so, you know, what Natalie and I want to teach, you know, she brings on her beautiful somatic work and I bring on the emotional alchemy piece of like, okay, so can you do this in a place where you feel safe? And you're still challenging yourself to stretch beyond like a version of you that has existed before, you know, can that new iteration of you actually be a more anchored version of your true self? And so, yeah, come to, come to our workshop and it'll change your life, not just your marketing strategy. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, okay. This is what's so cool. I think, um, the thing about 
a different way of approaching marketing is, you know, you don't have to use fear tactics. You don't have to pressure people. You don't have to be cool. You don't have to like push past the point where you're just going to be activated. It's like, okay, actually, um, instead, a different way of doing this is you can help people discern for themselves. You know, you can honor people's agency and their sovereignty. You can help them discern for themselves whether uh, they, whether you can help them and they want to work with you by giving them the information that they need in order to feel safe working with you, to know if, if, if they feel safe working with you. And something I learned, you know, something you've said that I love so much is like no modality and no, no practitioner is ever going to help you you know, help guide you to heal if you don't feel safe with them. And mm -hmm. that can be a whole like series of conversations in itself. But um, it's so true. It's like, first of all, people can learn to, you know, do they feel safe or do they feel activated uh, about working with you? And like, dear listener, if you feel activated by us, do not come to this workshop unless it's in that nervous sighted zone. Like, yeah. that means that like, if you if you but if you're feeling like, nervous sighted you're like oh this is intriguing it's a little bit ooh, and edgy but i think i want it then yeah mm -hmm. that's a good sign you know like but if you're like oh my god this is uh, like it's if you're, if you're getting dysregulated in that way they'll that's a sign to you know don't come <laughs> <laughs> um so like that's that's you know how do you discern whether to work with someone um so so you provide these people with the right information do they feel safe working with you do um you you help them give them information so that they can discern whether you really understand them. Do you really understand where they are, what they're struggling with and where they want to be like the outcome, the results, the transformation that they're desiring. Yeah. And do you share enough about your process about how you get them from point A to point B that they buy into it and they're willing to engage in that process instead of just being like, well, I think you can help me and I'm going to sign up. And then they get in there and then they're like, whoa, I am not okay with this process. And then they don't mm -hmm. do it and then they don't get results, you know? Yeah. So I think giving people the information they need to be fully, it, it, this, what's happening here is instead of pressuring, people are able to feel in themselves a whole aligned yes. And there might be that nervous sighted that I don't know, oh my God, I feel crazy doing this. Like I'm about to spend a lot of money or whatever, or, but, but something in them is like, yes, this is actually really going to help you. And yeah. they're not being pressured from a place of pain or desperation. They're, 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 the pressure comes from whatever the, the, the gap is between where they are, they are now and where they want to be. That's enough natural pressure for someone when they have all the information to make a decision about whether they want to work with someone or not. Mm -hmm. so, so this is, this is, this is new parent. This is, this is I've just outlined like That's what is the new paradigm. paradigm and we'll talk yeah. a little bit more about our process of how we help you do this as well. Yeah. I think the thing that, um, as you're talking about that, um, what's coming up for me is, you know, I spent the first half of my coaching career teaching conscious relationships and when I'm working with people who are, I mean, opting into a romantic relationship, a romantic partnership is an option. And a client practitioner relationship is also an optional relationship. And so I think the same principles that I teach in conscious relationship building applies here, which is invite the no, you know, like Invite the no so that when somebody says yes to you, it's a fuck yes. And I, I just want to I just want to kind of butt in there and say yeah. for I don't I don't subscribe wholly to the fuck yes because for me I hardly like when I'm in nervous sighted I hardly ever have a fuck yes I have a yes I'm nervous but in my heart this is yes and it's kind of a rooted yes actually so maybe that is fuck yes for me but I just yeah. I have a lot of. Uh, resistance to fuck yes. <laughs> okay. That's totally fair. It can be a rooted yes, or it can be fuck yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think inviting the no in like the context of marketing and in business is show up and share exactly who you are, you know, 
give them like all of the methodology so that like it's not a surprise if I start talking about Taoism in our sessions because I've already primed you with this concept of the Tao and purpose in all of the marketing that brought you into my container. You know, make sure that you are giving people all of the exits off of the road so that if they do opt in to saying yes, like, you know they want to be there and it's coming from this grounded, rooted, parasympathetic, safe place versus from a place where you're worried about there being rejection or you're worried about this person not really wanting your thing, but now I have to mold myself and create something so that they feel like they're getting their needs met. Like, make sure that you are rooted and secure and grounded in yourself so that you can bring that energy into the relationship with the client. And um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you as you were talking is because we're talking about this like nervous sided state, um, what does that feel like in your body? Ooh, for me, I'm like such a stomach person. <laughs> <laughs> some people feel things in their legs or some people feel them in their chest but I am like a, a like like fizziness in my stomach it's like a little bit you know there's energy moving around there but at the same time I'm I'm still I still have access to myself if that makes sense because when I'm in just that nervous fearful place that dysregulated place I am like I my main I, my main mode is shut down and dissociate and like I, I have a whole host of things it's like so clear I'm like oh I'm in I can't think I can't see I can't hear like I can hear that there's noise but I can't process it like yeah so that's when I've gone too far but like in the nervous sighted I could feel like there's like kind of like almost like agitation energy but not like anxiety in a way that it's like jabbing me or anything it's more like um it's not painful but it's like there's energy there it's fizzy yeah. and I still feel that rootedness in myself there's something I guess that my heart does come into it because my heart is like this is for you like mm -hmm. you're nervous but we got you you got yourself mm -hmm. take the next step you don't need to leap take the next step. That's like kind of what my heart is saying to me. I'm such a like, take the next step. You don't have to leave. <laughs> yeah. How about yeah. you? Um, I love that you contrasted it with the like dysregulated state because I think that it's easier for me to feel the difference when we can contrast like the opposite, equal and opposite. And so I have the opposite sort of dysregulated state as you, which is I go more into problem solving and doing all the things and keeping myself busy and like doing actions for action's sake. And it's this very like, like I have hit burnout multiple times in my life because of this, but I'm also recognizing now that that's actually another form of dissociation. And like there the strategies are different between between you and I, but the the energy behind it is I don't want to connect and root into this thing that is scary in my life. And so I'm going to figure out a way to run away from it. And you just happen to your nervous system likes freeze and my nervous system likes fight. I want to add to that if I can. Yeah. That it's also, you know, I think it's so important. And this is what I'm learning just from studying polyvagal theory and being in somatic experiencing it's so important for people to recognize that this is your the way your nervous system is always looking for cues of safety versus danger and it is a subconscious process it is not something mm. that you are cognitively consciously in your mind or even your conscious awareness deciding and your yes. nervous system is always doing this yes. and it decides what is the best way to protect you and it's trying to protect you it's not trying to mess up your life you yes. Know, like, yes 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 yeah. it's like oh oh life threat and if you fight you'll probably get even more harmed if you 
run away, you'll probably get even more harmed. So we're going to shut you down and pretend yeah. you're dead. <laughs> you know, yeah. like your body is just like, I'm trying to help here. And yeah. the cool thing is you can rewire yourself. It is so yeah. freaking awesome. Yes. And, you know, you are speaking to that resilience piece that we all have the capacity for. And you're totally right. You know, the strategy that worked in my family was that I went into fight mode and saved all the people in my family and, you know, thought that that was how I was supposed to run and live my life. And, you know, for you, you had a different upbringing. And so freezing was actually the safer thing. And so, like, when we look at these stories without this idea of, like, what's wrong with me? And instead, we can look at them like as communication and understanding and that your body's actually been trying to work with you and not against you. Like that changes the entire narrative, right? And and so for me, I think it's so important to have these connections and these check-ins with our body when it comes to making decisions about how, where you want your business to go, you know, like I made a, a fairly recent switch over into wanting to do more spiritual business mentorship versus conscious relationship coaching. And to me, like that was that like nervous sided energy. And in my body, it was like, I think it's so like, <laughs> almost like you and I are like yin yang in all of these ways. But like, like it's an anchoring feeling for me. Like it's a downward like sort of sensation versus like a fizzing up, like you were saying up to your heart. It's like rooted in my pelvis. It's rooted in my womb space. And there's this like descending, but not in the like pit in your stomach sort of descending. It's like the, this, this is here. This is the present moment. This is something heavy that we need to sit and settle into because my natural tendency is to do this, like just up in my head and doing all the things. I think that when I feel nervous sighted, it actually is the opposite, which is, okay, we're slowing down. Yeah, we're descending. And so I wanted to just throw this invitation out there for you if you're listening of like checking in with your body when you think about all these things that we're talking about today is, you know, building a new paradigm I really want to think about us as like starting a revolution of folks who are going to show up in their businesses in this different way that's rooted in safety that's rooted in cycles that's rooted in um, understanding sovereignty both within yourself and within your client and if this brings up a sense of like nervous sided energy like that's that's a sign to sort of take the next step and just move towards the thing that you feel nervous sighted about. And if it's not like, if it's bringing up the like mind chatter and if it's bringing up the like, you know, shut down feeling, then this isn't, this isn't right for you. And that's totally okay too. We still love you. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about, um, how we're going to help. What is our process? And, you know, this is just a little disclaimer. This is the first time Kat and I will have taught this workshop, but, uh, so subject to change. <laughs> and if you're okay with that, cool. But what we, you know, through all of our brainstorming and co-creating, what we've come up with is we're going to help you get from, you know, kind of either you know fr from this point a where you're feeling like resistant to talking about pain or problems because you don't want to re-traumatize or manipulate prospective clients or where you're feeling pressure to portray yourself as cool or perfect or where your mind goes blank when you plan your content because you don't know how to talk about what you do because like how do how do you even like make sense of it to someone else or when you put tons of effort into your marketing only to hear crickets and not get any sales like uh this would be like where you're starting the point A that, you know, if probably is this will help you. And where we want to help you get is to be able to step into how to, first of all, um, show up in that energy of what we're talking about here of your own agency and sovereignty and offer that to others, you know, show up in that energy because the energy that 
you're showing up in is the energy you're going to attract in. And Kat says that. And I love like so many, you know, this is like a energy thing here. The energy folks, you get it, right? Like the energy you create in is the energy you receive in. That's yeah. uh, uh, my friend Emily Hamilton of Psychic Herbalism is always saying that. I love it. And, um, and we also want to help you like actually create content not only just show up in the right energy or the aligned energy but like how do you actually create the content and that's that yin yang we've been talking about here of like okay we're doing the energy and then we're gonna do the strategy but the strategy yeah. in service of the right energy and so yeah. some of the things we're gonna have you do is you know we've already touched on it here a little bit but we're gonna go way deeper is like learn that difference between aligned attraction versus manipulative marketing so you can trust that you're selling ethically in a kind way that isn't re-traumatizing people. And this really includes key understandings around speaking to pain in a way that helps your audience feel seen and understood rather than activated and fearful. And we'll get into how do you actually do that? What does that look like? How can you tell the difference? Why does this matter? We'll get into all of that kind of stuff. And we'll also have you attuned to what kind of energy you're bringing to your marketing. So you can like know this for yourself. We want you to walk away from this, not just relying or depending on us to tell you, but like for you to be able to attune to this yourself and to know how do you can shift out of a space of neediness, doubt, or fear into a space of uh, into a space of service, trust, and confidence. And this will also help you identify and clear blocks to creating content because there's so much subconscious stuff happening, and yes. to, you know clear those blocks to marketing and selling and helps free you from that heavy toll that unconscious fears can take on your mind your body and your business and we'll have you write content that provides your audience with the information that they need in order to know if they're aligned to work with you and mm -hmm. this is like the strategy the structure how do you do it and what's so cool about this i am such a nerd for this but like this approach not only sells with integrity but it also helps your content provide value in itself as yeah. it's giving your audience hope and it offers clarity about how to overcome their challenges. And it also helps you avoid blank screen syndrome where you sit down, you're like, I don't even know where to begin because we'll give you a clear starting point and guide you through each step of the way. And you can take this home and do it yourself and grow it and mod it and make it your own. And once you've learned this approach through writing, as we're going to teach it, you can apply it to any platform or type of content. It, you can apply it like, we're applying it here in podcast form, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, um, so it does start. It's really writing is really helpful because it's just so much easier to edit and organize your thoughts. But once you've done this, you can take this anywhere and apply it to any any platform. Yeah. You summed up our the intentions of our uh, workshop so beautifully. And I think that there's a reason why we decided to do this as like a full weekend intensive is because there's so much wisdom to impart on y'all and we also want to make sure that we go at a pace that feels safe to your nervous system so that you can digest it and integrate it all like that's a really really important piece for me is like I've taken these courses where it just felt like I had to like implement 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 like right off the bat and it's like no 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 like it doesn't feel safe quite yet. And so um, I just want to reassure you that if you've had that type of training in the past, like that's not at all what we're about. We're about creating that safety for you um, so that whatever you put out on whatever timeline you decide feels really, really, really good and juicy to you. Um, and I wanted to just tack on this one of the big pieces that I had back when I was starting to um, take these courses around business and copywriting is like, I was just like, I don't want to spend my entire day just writing, you know? <laughs> and now that I feel like I've got really solid copywriting skills, I will say that it's not the simple act of writing. It's not just about writing. It's actually a mindset reframe of like being able to look at data and data can even come in the form of you sitting in a session with a client and understanding so that you can put what they're saying and put their feelings 
into a framework that you can then use to attract other people that are just like that beautiful dream client that's sitting in front of you. Like if you want more people like that, then let's give you the tools so that you can get more people like that. And I will say that um, copywriting shows up in how I talk about what I do with the random people that I meet on the street. Um, I'm like I had shared earlier, I'm in the middle of writing a book proposal. Like it is basically like copywriting. <laughs> so, um, and you know, it shows up in your sales, like in these very obvious ways, but you'd be really surprised how this, I want you to think of this as not just like writing skills. It's really a mind frame shift that touches on every aspect of your life. Um, and, and I would say, I would even go so far to say that like, it's changed how I communicate with my partner as well. Like if I can be really clear and intentional about where I'm at and where I'd like to be and invite him into that process of like, how can we get there as a team? Like, man, I feel like all communication gets better if you can learn how to copyright ethically. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> and, I mean, because it is at, at, at its core, since it's not about pressuring and manipulation, it is about relating. And I feel like that's kind of sums up everything about the paradigm shift we're currently making away from our old paradigm of power over and domination to a, a paradigm of connection and relationship and interconnectedness. And yeah. this, this is just a framework that, you know, this is just the new paradigm applied through marketing and business, but does apply to, to communicating and relating. Like, uh, I just, it gets me so juiced up. Like, yes. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We have okay. so many things to talk about. I know. I'm like, um, do we have to stop talking about this? Cause... <laughs> we should wrap up this episode though. So that I people... know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So y'all, when you sign up, so this is going to be, we're doing it April 2nd and 3rd, 2022. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you're listening to this after that point and you're like, oh, I'm so sad I missed this, get it on our email list because we will we'll hopefully do it again. Uh, yeah. But I don't know when. So we don't know that. Who that we, I don't know that far in the future right now. Um, <laughs> all I know is we're doing it April 2nd and 3rd of 2022. And what you're going to get is you're going to get this weekend of instruction. So it's all day Saturday and then um so it's 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. So see if that works for you. And a replay will, uh, that's for Saturday. And then Sunday's 9 a.m. to 12 noon Pacific time. And then so you get your Saturday or your Sunday. I can't get my days right here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Saturday and Sunday, y'all. Okay. So it's like all day Saturday and then half day Sunday, half day just Sunday, the morning yeah. Sunday. And so um, there's going to be that, you know, we're going to, do these things that we've talked about. There's going to be a private community forum and support. There will be meditations, exercises, worksheets, journaling prompts, and you'll have the access to the recordings for three months. And you will also, I'm, I'm working on a little content checklist that you can use when you've finished writing a piece of content or creating a piece of content to ensure that each, it, it contains each of these things as well. So in addition to that, you'll get a chance to win a seat on the next Council of Business Alchemist Mentorship with Kat, which I actually am in right now and I love Yay. it. Kat has had a huge <laughs> role, you know, in helping me take all of this trauma healing that I've been doing with my therapist and apply it to business. And it's been amazing. And, um, and you'll also win a chance to win to a uh, personalized content audit with me where I'll go through and I'll go through your website, your social media, and certain other, you know, whatever your most important pieces of um, content are, and help show you how to connect the dots in this way that we're talking about, you know, hands on, just like, okay, here's where one -on -one. you can go boop, 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 boop. Yep. One to one. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. just to be clear, like to get a chance to win the business alchemist mentorship or that one-on-one, -on -one, um, 
consultation service with with Nat. Um, after our weekend, we'll ask you to write a piece of content and share it on social media, and um, that's how we'll do the drawing for that. Is um, we want you to implement these things, and we'll give you some time to do it. We want you to implement the things that you learned over the weekend and show us. Like we want to see you out in the world sharing your magic. And so if you do that and tag us, then we'll do a drawing of those people. And, um, yeah, a seat on the council is, I think, priced at like 2800 And, you know, I don't know how much you, you uh, charge for the consultation service, but it is... It's literally priceless because I don't offer it as a standalone thing. So <laughs> <laughs> you have to work with me in a whole month for yeah. four figures. And so... Yeah. Mm, yeah. So... Yeah. Um, so come on in, join us. We'd love to have you in on the weekend. Um, we've priced this in a way that is really accessible um, because we think it's such an important conversation to be having for people. And we want this like journey into conscious marketing to be a place that, um, you know, money is less of a factor. So it is 188 for the weekend course. And so come on in. We'd love to see you there. And yeah. Yeah. And for you analytical cats out there who are like, oh, wait, aren't you pressuring people into sharing a piece of content in order to win, to be eligible to win this? I'm going to say this is, um, this is a great indicator of are you ready to do this kind of, are you ready you know, are you nervous sighted about actually writing a piece of content and putting it out there? And if not, but you still want to take this workshop, cool. But I think that's a great indicator and a kind of great indicator of like whether this is you're really ready to receive the value of this. Would yeah. you agree, Kat? I, I'm yeah. just kind of no, throwing this out that. there. No, I we hadn't really talked that through, but I love that because we don't want this to just sit in a bubble with you. Like we want you to actually unlock something within your nervous system that lets you feel safe enough to show up. And so if you're ready for that kind of work, that level of work where you are actually putting something out there that has your heart and soul in it, then, you know, that, that is a great indicator. I love that, Natalie. Yeah. And of course there's no pressure. Like if you sign up and you're no. like, I don't really care. Yeah. I'm not going to put a piece out. That's fine too. Like, just say totally. it. I just wanted to kind of clear that up. Totally, totally. Yeah. All right. If people have questions, um, well, actually, Kat, where can they go to sign up? And what should they do if they have questions that aren't yeah. answered by our sales page or any of our content or anything? Totally. So um, you can sign up on empoweredcuriosity.com. There will be a link there that takes you to the conscious marketing sales page. And if there are any questions at all, you're welcome to email me directly, cat at empoweredcuriosity.com, or just send me a DM on Instagram. I am very active and I love staying engaged with my community there. So um, just drop me a line and let me know what's on your mind and heart and, and if there's any questions that I can answer for you. And, you know, I, I love questions because oftentimes there will be multiple people that have the same question and then we can sort of throw that up on Instagram too and just share that with the broader community. Yeah. So there are no that. stupid questions. <laughs> and even if you have a question for me, Natalie, just still contact Kat because Kat and I are chatting, chat all day. So, uh, yeah. just hit up Kat. And Dad. how can people find you, Natalie? Well, I offer a podcast. <laughs> you know, you might be listening to my podcast. You might be listening to Kat's podcast. So we both have podcasts. So in case yeah. you're on each other's, the other's podcast, uh, I have a podcast called Earth Speak. And we, I interview all kinds of practitioners and change makers who are really helping bring in this new paradigm and, you know, rooted in Earth-based spirituality. So that's really fun. And then I also have this um as I mentioned, I have a membership and community where you can come actually engage in um, energetic hygiene and spiritual practices with others and community in live face-to-face -face calls every week. And you can access our entire library of workshops where you can try out different modalities, 
te you know test run different teachers that you might want to work with more deeply it's really cool so um that's called the collective and i i guess I'll, I'll soon be putting this out there probably by the time this uh workshop comes out but probably not by the time this episode comes out but i'll be speaking more publicly about um the work i do with clients one-to-one -one, so you can work with me in a one-to-one -one capacity and i will help you you know apply these concepts much more deeply to your own content and marketing process and my books are currently full right now because they just are but you can always hit me up if you're interested and i'll put you on a wait list and um i'll be talking more about that publicly soon so yeah i'm, I'm, I'm transitioning more into like i love this work so much that i am going to be spending more of my time doing this and less of it working on earth speak but still working on earth speak but reconfiguring what earth speak looks like so yeah 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 i love this transition for you thanks <laughs> yeah kat what you want to share a little bit about you know what's your podcast and what else do you offer and where can people find you? Yeah. So my podcast is the empowered curiosity podcast. Um, we, I, I'm really, really rooting and anchoring into this concept of Tao. And so helping people understand that their wounding is actually the equal and opposite side of their purpose. And so we can have an understanding of like our woundings are not just things that are meant to keep us broken, but really it's the, the pathway to help guide us to understand why we are here, why we manifested, you know, who we are at our core. Um, so um, my guests and I talk about that um, on a fairly deep level. And the ways that you can work with me is I do one-on-one -on -one work. Right now my books are also full, and um, but you can always reach out and, and be put on the wait list. I also run a group program called the Business Alchemist Mentorship Program. And that's the thing that um, Natalie was just speaking about, where you get to go through with a cohort of folks um, who are on the same exact journey as you and really dive into the why and the how of building a spiritual a spiritually based business. And um, that is a nine month program. And actually every month I host a trauma healing circle in the Earth Speak Collective. So um, that is a really, really low entry point to come work with me. And we do group coaching sessions. I teach about the nervous system. I teach about communication. Basically, I sort of let the community guide me in what it is that they want to hear more about. And then I create either a presentation or an exercise or an activity around it. And we do that all together in community because there is something just magical about communities that um, I think is a, a lost form of medicine these days. And so I'm really here to, to reclaim that as a medicine for all of us. So yeah, those are all the ways that you can find me. I love it. Yeah. And, um, your website, empoweredcuriosity.com and my website's earthspeak.love. And I also have natalie.net, a little personal website. Just going to throw that out there. Cause I'm just firing that back up again. But, um, yeah, so excited. I'm like, there's like a hundred other conversations I want to have right now. I'm like, oh my God. So this was so <laughs> fun and I'm thrilled to be co-creating this with you, Kat. And mm. thank you for the invitation and thank you all you dear listeners. And I can't wait to meet the people who are coming to the workshop. Yes. It's going to be so fun. And yeah, <laughs> we're going to be si we're silly. I'm a silly person. So yep. yeah. Okay, loves. Well, thank you for being here and... Yeah, thank you, Natalie. And I just, I just love hanging out with you. We could just do this all day long, I think. Yeah, for sure. Same. <laughs> Alrighty. Bye, loves.